Do you understand this is criminal? Yes, what I you've understand. Done? This is a crime. She's gonna take everything. Hello, the swingers. Who gives? I am going to open up the DNA test. Why? Say hi to your mother. <laughs> I don't know what I look like. Wow. <laughs> and this is how I rule. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Anna Polo Rules. Today we have Erica suing Fiona. Erica is a caregiving nurse, uh, and she alleges that she was unjustifiably fired from her employment, which was caring for the defendant's mother. Is that correct? Yes, Dr. Anapolo. Okay, could you please explain a bit of the details? I have been a professional end-of-life caregiver for the past 10 years. In this situation, my patient was diagnosed with Alzheimer's and dementia, and I was hired, and I worked there for about six months. During that time, I would basically take care of my patient. I would be there throughout the day, sometimes into the night, well past the, my time that I was supposed to leave. I would feed my patient, take care of them, make sure that they're moving uh, frequently so as to not develop bed sores, administer medicine, everything that you might imagine that a caregiver might need to do once a patient can no longer care for themselves. Okay, tell me what happened. I had been working for the defendant for about six months, and one day I arrive at work, and I'm greeted at the door by the defendant, and she is belligerent. She's screaming at me, she's accusing me of elder abuse, and I was discharged. I have never in my 10 years as a professional caregiver been accused of such heinous behavior. All right, so what, what's, your, what's your demands? What are you asking for here? Today, I'm here to get my job back, but more importantly, to clear my name. Since I've been fired, I have not been able to get another job, and this is my livelihood. It's how I'm supporting myself through nursing school. I have dreams of eventually becoming a nurse practitioner in geriatrics. I want to go ahead and work in hospitals. And this woman has basically destroyed my entire life in one day. Okay, perfect. Okay, Fiona, it says here that you're unemployed at this time. Yes. Is Dr. that correct? Yes, Dr. How Paul. long have you been unemployed? I've been unemployed now for almost a year. And why have you had so, so much difficulty in getting another job? Well, the situation is that I had to stop working. I had been prior to caring for my mother, I'd been caring for my father, who at the end of his life had to be hospitalized. Uh -huh. And so that required a lot of my visiting my father. I'm the only family member. So I had to be there for my father, and that's why I consequently ended losing my job. And then shortly thereafter, my father is passing away. I had to move in with my mother because she became ill. And when she got diagnosed with Alzheimer's, then I had to really be full-time with her. But after a year of taking care of her, Dr. Anapolo, um, it just started wearing on me. And I started getting also physically sick, and my doctor prescribed for myself to try to take some time away so that I could be well, because if I'm not well, Right. I couldn't take care of my mother. So that's and when you so, decided to hire? So that's when, thankfully, I was able to hire somebody professional. Also, because of my mother's stage of Alzheimer's, she needed professional care. And because I care about my mother so much, I wanted to be sure that she was getting the best possible care. And I knew at that point I could not give it to her. Okay. So I, I you hired, hired her. Now, why did you hire her? Where did you hear about her services? What motivated you to say, okay, this is the right person to take care of my mother? I had gotten some recommendations about her because I can't, I can't give her the title of nurse after what she's done to my mother. And I got some recommendations from friends. So I hired her and uh, about five months into my mother's care, mm -hmm. uh, I came home, I usually come home at around seven o'clock at night and I came home to find my mother bruised. And bruises I found that were there the day before? Is that what you're saying? Dr. Bruises. Well, give me a okay. second. Bruises, bruises that were not there the day before, that for were example? Not th that were not there the day before. What else did you see? Um, and I also, when I was moving her gently, 
to put her in bed, I noticed she just, she screamed. And, and then that's when I took her to the doctor and they in fact found some fractured uh, ribs on my mother. Okay, well, let me tell you this. Uh, we have an expert here, Dr. Jaime Fernandez, who's a physician, and he had the opportunity to review your mother's x-rays and, and medical records. So I want to invite uh, Dr. Jaime Fernandez uh, to come in uh, so that he can give us his expert opinion of what he believes may have happened to your elderly mother. Good afternoon, doctor. Doctor. Pleasure having you here. Thank you so much. All right, what is your opinion about her bruises and her broken rib? Could it be the result of abuse? This is a very difficult situation right here. As I, as I share with the medical students that I teach, we have to be very careful that we don't trip over Maslow's hammer. In other words, to a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Absolutely. The x-rays do demonstrate fractures. In fact, there's, there's one definite fracture, and there's a, what's known as a cortical buckling. In other words, the rib tended to bend a little bit, not enough to fracture. However, I didn't see any evidence of bruising, any hematoma. There was no pneumothorax, which is a downed lung, or any pleural effusion that would suggest that there was trauma to that area. Okay, so what could be the result of the, of the fracture then? It frail could, bones? It could be frail bones. I understand that the patient is quite elderly. Um, I understand that the patient also has um, dementia, has Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. These patients are very, very difficult to deal with. Okay. And um, it could be possible that this was spontaneous. It could be possible that it was during the course of regular care. Or it could have been possible that there was something much more sinister involved. Okay. But we cannot conclusively say that the fracture was as a result of an abuse. Absolutely not. Okay. How about the bruising? But may bruising I... in the arms? As people age, the skin becomes thinner, the blood vessels become more frail, and any, any simple touch, any simple rub and can produce these, these types of lesions. In the evidence that was presented to me, I did not see any evidence of hematomas, which would be significant and classic evidence of bruising. Thank you for your expert opinion. Thank you for this I opportunity. I was very enlightened. Thank you very much, doctor. You may retire yourself. Thank you. Let's take a short break, and when we come back, we'll explore more in detail this very delicate issue. <laughs> so what are you telling me? That, that she wasn't giving her the medication? Riddle Excuse me? me? Yes, I am asking, riddle me that. If this medication is supposed to be for her to take care and get rid of these symptoms, how come those symptoms are still there? It's a difficult situation. I understand your concern. Eh? You've gone through a traumatic experience, first with your father. Uh, I think you're yeah. overburdened, but apparently, from the, you know, from the investigation, it doesn't appear that there was any trauma. There hasn't been any, any abuse, any aggression towards her that produced this okay, fracture. May I, say, may I say something? Yes. Because there's more. Okay. My mother also had been, become extremely agitated and a lot of anxiety. And to the nurse had advised that we prescribe her some specific pills to raise the dosage of the medication that she was on. In the beginning days as she left, I noticed that my mother was so agitated, even though the prescription that she had been given was supposed to be to take care of these symptoms. So what are you telling so me? That, tell me? That she wasn't giving her the medication? Riddle Excuse me? me. If this medication is supposed to be for her to take care and get rid of these symptoms, how come those symptoms are still there? I'm and then sorry. wait, no wait, let me just, let me finish, let me finish. Okay. The interesting thing is, when she leaves, now I have been taking care of my mother mm -hmm. in these last month and a half. Okay. And I immediately started giving her the medication. How come now that I am giving her the medication, my mother 
percentages are gone. Well, in all due respect, I mean, Calm I know that, I know that all these medications have a cumulative effect. <laughs> Where? I mean, they don't they don't work immediately on the first pill. But Sometimes no, but she's been give, on You have them. to give a certain amount That's of medication right, for it to work. And she had oh, been on little. that for two months. She had, okay. according Excuse to her. Me. Tell me what you're suggesting. I want you I'm to be as clear as possible. I don't know if she really was giving her those pills and where and where they are. Excuse me. I have never in my 10 years not followed the prescription and the protocol prescribed by a doctor. Tell me something. Do you have the prescriptions that your mother is supposed to, is supposed to be taking? Yes, ma'am. Let me have them, please. Let me see. Let me I see would like are. to point out that even if I had recommended that a dosage is much. increased, yes, the doctor, because I don't have prescription power, needs to approve that prescription. No. Do any of these drugs have a street what value? For? Because I know some of them Dr. do. Dr. Polo, I want to I say that the reasons for my suspicions are founded because of the last uh, information that I gave you. You'll find that it is indeed has a street value in that last piece of paper that I provided you with. That it is one of the drugs that apparently has become fashionable now with students. Oh, here, Don's appeal. There the possibility go. of purchasing smartness in go. a bottle oh, is likely goodness. to have a broad that... appeal to students. Yes. <laughs> so students are buying these pills to like make them feel more alert uh, yes. and, and stimulated. And that's why... So kids can use this like yes. uh, entertainment drugs. I'm starting to understand. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to have to find out what's really happening in this case. I have evidence. I've been taking pictures of what, what's been going on. I have noticed college students from my classes um, coming to Fiona's house. In my house? Who? When? Where are the pictures? Something is weird. Something is, is Something sketchy. is suspicious Something here. Is, is, okay, so the quantities were there. They were reduced from the bottle, but your mother was not reacting still, as if she was under the influence of the medication. That's correct. Okay. Something is sketchy, and I... The only my thing that is sketchy is that you are trying to no. ruin my reputation and my life. Yes, and I have someone... Let's bring in the witness, I do please. have a witness. Let's bring in the who witness. Who will... Okay, let's see what the witness has to say in this case. A witness But something what? is not adding up. You Dr. Know, Polo, I gave the medication. I, hey, listen. You say you gave the medication. We have this situation where the mother was not reacting. And may She's I not say, reacting. Dr. Polo, the pills are missing. The pills Dr. are not Polo, missing. I administered the medication, so I'm not entirely missing. sure at what point she counted them. Hi, I'm and Polo. Before, I'm Melanie Gomez, and I'm here because I have witnessed some strange things going on in my neighborhood pertaining to this lady over here. Like, I've been trying to concentrate because I'm a college student and it's been just so loud and I notice people walking in and out of her, Fiona's house and I think this is very disrespectful for her mother because isn't this lady supposed to be taking care of her mother? Like, I wouldn't want that happening to my mother. I'm pretty sure you wouldn't want that happening to your wait. mother. Are you a next door neighbor to this lady? Yes. yes next door? No, I live in front of her. In front, in front, in front of, of her house? Yes, okay. correct. So you're able to see from your window what goes on in her home? Correct, because like it's very loud. It's a lot of distractions, and loud. so I, did, I decided to let Fiona know. And I have evidence. I've been taking pictures of what, what's been going on. I have noticed college students from my classes um, coming to Fiona's house. So I think that's very no. strange. May I pre please show you this evidence? So you had college students I don't going recognize. into your house. One of the friends. girls is actually my friend. She knows they're college students because it's one of them is one of her friends from school. So how many people you you think would come in and out of the house? Like a lot of people, like. Tell That's your classmate? She goes. Is Are that you? your classmate? Yes. That's my cousin. Okay, oh, so she's cousin. That's my cousin. Lying. Oh, no, no, no I'm not your lying. Cousin that's doing my there? cousin. Why, why did she come visit They come you? by the house what? just because, excuse me, they come by the house, obviously, she's not inside, uh -huh. okay, and it was just because she needed to ask me a question. She passed by. I answered her question. She left. I mean, she could have called you on the phone. She could have called me, but she didn't want to have that conversation over the phone. Uh, how many people have you seen in one day come in and out of this house? Like five. And then, like, she, she greets them. Sometimes she lets them inside the house. And I'm pretty sure she doesn't in even know house. them. Who, 
what? Who? Because these when? people, how, I never seen these people in my neighborhood. So it, I just find it so weird. I'm, I'm like, where are these people coming from? They come in like cars. Sometimes she goes out, she gives them something. Like, it just looks very suspicious. Dr. Paul, Dr. Paul, how I can't believe she's doing this you? to Fiona. Okay, don't, don't, please, don't, 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 don't bring me into I this. I've seen her take care of her. I, I, I'm an observant, I'm, I'm objective, I listen. But no. don't don't put me in your my place. Apo- There's apologies. no need to do no, that. But it's someone coming into my home without her letting me know. Absolutely, that's inappropriate. With, with my with I my agree. mother it's inappro- under her I totally never agree happened. with you. There's something inappropriate going on. What she's told me that she's told me a couple of things that just her credibility is starting to fail. But she you know, was I'm never. Just, when I, I was taking care of her mother, she was never home. She would leave and ne- not come back. Sometimes she would come back at 7 p.m. to put her mother to bed. And but line, uh, she line. would leave for days at a time. Now this is the first line. time you tell me this. No, I no. just mentioned it. No, no, she, you, but, no. but this is the first time you tell me this during and this that, whole case. And I think that's home, such an important that, fact no, I've that you should have exposed it, it at the never, beginning of the case. She was never around. And now and that, that she's taking care of her mother full time is when she's noticing the medication. Working. Of course. That's, of course, because you're around. Because I'm giving it to her. No, because you're around. Because I'm giving I'm sorry. it to her. Something in here is not adding up, but something in my gut is telling me I'm getting very close to the answer. Right after this break, the ruling. I'm not perfect. I'm not a lie detector test. I'm not a machine. So I am going to ask the audience who believes that she's been doing this. Please raise your hand. So what are you doing now as an alternative? You fired her. Who's taking care of your mother now? After what happened with her, I am... I don't trust anybody at okay. this point. Okay, perfect. And, and, and your intention is to take, keep taking care of your mother? Until either you find a job find, or you find or you can replace the no, nurse. At, at this point, it's more important to take care of my mother than for me to find a job because my mother is the most important person in my world right now. And I'm going to take care of her until I find the right person. And this time I'm going to do my research deeply, which brings me to my last point. She says that for 10, and again, another lie surfaces. As I research, because when once this happened, then... I didn't trust my friend's recommendation, and I trusted my research, and I found I have something that I would like to show you. Okay, let me see. That I went and found in a very reputable caregiver. And there are a number of comments here regarding Erica. One of them says, is there anyone here who has worked with Erica, a caregiver from Orange County? I'm having some issues with her, and I wanted to know if anyone else has had any problems. Uh, There's another one that says, Erica was my mother's caregiver in the past. As a matter of fact, we did have an issue. Erica dropped my mom while taking care of her. My mother broke her hip, and it was a terrible experience for all of us. Dr. Polo. You're telling me these people are lying? It's a mischaracterization of the facts. Oh, okay. Oh, my God, that's terrible. I knew it. Well, I have found some bruises on my mother. I'm very concerned. Well, what did you guys do, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So when you told me that in your 10 years experience you've never had any problems, you were, were in fact not being truthful to I me. I was being 100% truthful. Well, apparently what, not because you have had some what problems. Hap- no, what happened was that occurred during my first year of training uh-huh. as a caregiver. Uh-huh. And I was cleared of any negligence because what happened was that the patient fell on top of me. I sprained my wrist because I actually broke the woman's fall. Okay. Because of her brittle bones, she broke her hip. Right. But I would also like to point out that a broken hip is more consistent with a fall than a broken rib is. I have never laid my hands on any of my patients, and I am tired of this woman defaming you me wanna, and wanna, accusing me. Let me tell you something. I, I don't think you're an abuser. I don't think you're abused elderly. I think you, I think you do something else. I think you're into something else. No. But hey, this is just my feeling. This is my experience, and this is my observation. Um, I've done this for many years. But you know, I'm gonna do something else in this case because I'm not perfect. I'm not a lie detector test. I'm not a machine. Uh, you know, I. That's why we have juries sometimes. We have jurors, right? 
and they help judges and they make decisions. So I am going to ask the audience to raise their hands if they suspect that this woman has been selling the drugs that her patient was supposed to be taking to college students so that uh, they could do better and stay more focused in college. Who believes that she's been doing this? Please raise your hand. Oh, Never okay, in my life have I done that. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry, no, let me tell that you is something. ridiculous, Dr. Let Poodle. me tell you something. I, I, you know, if it quacks like a duck. And it's Ten like years a duck and as a professional, I have never been accused of that. My dear, let me tell you something. This is a difficult world we live in. You told me that this job is very important. They're going back to school. And all of, me, all of that sounds to me like, I need money, Dr. Poodle. No, that's what I financial need a job. aid is for. I need money. And a lot of people supplement their no. incomes doing a lot of strange, Dr. Polo. illegal things. In my opinion, and because of the credibility that I put on this witness, I believe what she's telling me. Thank I you. really thank do. You. Well, I you. think that you were selling these pills to college students thank so you. that they could stay focused and you could supplement your income as a caregiving nurse so that you could eventually go to school. So my decision is the case is you don't get your job back, and that is how I rule.